welcome back to the Surface Transport edition of the Benari podcast with our guest, Lee Sander. Lee, last week we covered some of the issues facing transit in North America uh, as it recovers from the pandemic. But in your eyes, you know, what are some of the issues facing transit in North America as we look to the future? Transit is synonymous with cities. So a lot of it is what is the future of downtowns, downtowns, anchor, major uh, regional uh, metropolitan areas. And so uh, a lot of what will happen will turn on uh, the new hybrid working model. As we talked about last week, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan Chase, Google, Goldman Sachs, you know, they believe that at the end of the day, they see more creativity, more energy, the need to mentor younger staff, they're committing to their investment to downtowns. Question is, will that be the wave or uh, or not? So a lot of it will turn on you know what happens there. But there are other major drivers uh, that will also be influencing the conversation. Uh, one of them is climate change, the need to you know reduce carbon footprint. The push for that is just going to get you know more intense as time goes on. Second, issues of equity. Uh, with Black Lives Matter and the other dialogue in the United States and also in Canada, you know, a continued focus on equity. You have a lot of folks, lower middle income in these cities. They don't have the ability uh, as others uh, who are higher income in terms of working at home, other challenges. So that's going to be a factor, again, of uh, driving investment in cities. The demographic changes in the United States, those will continue. And so, you know, the likelihood is that government will, you know, begin to put its thumb on the scale and further drive this. So those are things to watch. And the investments that were made um, already uh, with uh, COVID, uh, $32 billion of interim financial assistance to help transit in this period. And then now with the proposed Biden infrastructure bill, another $85 billion dollars or transit, in addition to Amtrak, which is oriented towards cities, um, you know, those are you know, significant movers in terms of investment. So in terms of what's the impact on transit, one would have to say as we get past this impact of COVID, you know, that the future you know, is encouraging. It's not a sure bet, but it would seem that it's going in that direction. The other interesting thing to watch are the politics, which drives the overall conversation from a public policy standpoint, uh, in addition to technology. And uh, you know, will that become a bipartisan issue? Transit has tended to be more focused you know, from the Democratic side. But as other social issues um, have, um, have progressed um, in North America, possibly you may see more of a bipartisan support for this. Comments like uh, by Mitt Romney, other Republicans suggest a commitment uh, to uh, transit uh, as well. Amazing. Okay, and yeah, obviously we've seen the proposal uh, for the Biden infrastructure plan, and you know one of the things that were highlighted on there was you know high speed rail. You know, you know, what are your thoughts on that as well moving forward? Right. So when you look at the Biden infrastructure bill, uh, you can see eighty to you know hundred billion dollars uh, that can be uh, committed to high speed rail. Some of the money is flexible in terms of major uh, projects. Uh, so, uh, you know, the California project is 80 to 100 billion, won't all be federal, that would take a large piece, but uh, you now see other projects again coming to the fore. Uh, an interesting project that's beginning to get some traction uh, is the North Atlantic Rail Project, yeah. uh, which would be high-speed rail from New York via Long Island to New Haven, Providence, uh, Boston, that has gotten strong support from the uh, New England congressional uh, delegation interested senior levels uh, of uh, US DOT. And that can be a, could be a companion piece to what is happening in California. So, um, so very, very uh, interesting to see what happens. There are other interesting projects as well. The Brightline project, uh, Las Vegas to LA, uh, they're aiming to get more federal funding. So uh, that's also uh, activity to watch uh, from a, a policy and federal uh, expenditure standpoint. Definitely. I think Boston to Manhattan in what, a hundred minutes. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, certainly exciting. It's a, certainly a thought as well. And, uh, you know, we were saying overall, you know, in terms of the cost that goes into it as well, 
are there any other challenges in terms of how we will pay for all this? You know, it's incredibly expensive to think about some of the projects that are involved. You know, we talk about high speed rail, the proposed, you know, North Atlantic piece is now going to be what they imagine about 105 billion over 20 years. You know, how is this going to be funded? Oh, and by the way, on that on that project, it's not just the time from Boston to New York, but it would have a transformative impact on these medium-sized cities that did not benefit in the last 20 years, 30 years from the changes um, uh, where uh, people were beginning to move toward younger people. So the impact on places like Long Island, Suffolk County, uh, that's been highly challenged from a demographic standpoint in terms of co being competitive, um, New Haven, Providence, so it's not just about Boston to New York, it's connecting with these pieces, with these cities in between. But getting back to uh, you know, the money, uh, so financing will be a challenge. We talked about with transit, the fare box is gonna be hit because uh, it won't be quite as much ridership. If the McKinsey study is right for the MTA, maybe you know, 10 per, you know, a reduction of 10% on the subway side, 20% on the commuter rail side. So uh, there will have to be a change in fare schedule. Uh, the other thing, um, in addition to the funding streams for the regional trans transit agencies, is at the federal side. So the Federal Highway Trust Fund, which has played a major piece in funding highways and transit, is running out of money because mileage isn't. You have you know more efficient mileage, uh, and uh, as a consequence, less people, you know, um, uh, less expenditure at the uh, gas uh, pump. And so uh, there will have to be um, uh, a focus on what we do with that. One of the ideas has gotten uh, some uh, currency even further. We looked at the, we looked at it. I was on the National Transportation Infrastructure Financing Commission, appointed by Congress in 2006. We proposed a, a VMT tax, vehicle miles traveled. You know, we saw that uh, Secretary Buttigieg was asked about this uh, when he testified in front of Congress. So keep an eye on that. And then um, they'll continue to be focused on P3s in terms of capital funding, not on the operating side, but on the capital funding. Um, and so uh, there will, you know, continue, will be continued to look at that model. So, you know, overall, you know, look for some changes on the, uh, on the financing side. I can imagine, I think a few weeks ago, Brightland CEO, Mike Reininger, you know, I think he was discussing with Congress in regards to expanding uh, or easing barriers to high-speed rail in the U.S. and really discussing steps to unlock more private investment into high-speed rail. So that'll be quite interesting to see how that comes across. Right. And one of the things to look at is value capture. Uh, that's one of the uh, mechanisms uh, that uh, CDPQ, the uh, Canadian uh, pension funds, who have uh, uh, championed the REM project in Montreal, like rail project, and so value capture uh, is something that REM is optimizing. So look also for value capture uh, in that uh, as well. Amazing. So overall, you're excited about the role of transit over the next well, several decades. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously cities, you know, have had, you know, a, a incredibly challenging time with the pandemic, with COVID. But when you look medium long term, uh, I think cities you know, will remain. Uh, the centerpiece, uh, the backbone of, uh, of our economies uh, and society and transit, uh, I think we'll be able to keep up. There'll be techn technological improvements, changes to financing, but I'm you know, overall optimistic about uh, the future of transit. I couldn't agree more. And yeah, thank you again for sharing your thoughts, Lee. Uh, as always, incredibly insightful. My pleasure. Thank you, Gov.